everybody. Welcome to our home libraries for some additional special content for Mystery March. We have two podcasts out this month that are specifically mystery books, and we will do some additional content here on the YouTube channel. So today we're going to be focusing on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and Sherlock Holmes. So let's get cozy, let's get relaxed, and let's get into it. Not that I'm getting nervous. <laughs> So for those of you who are maybe unfamiliar, our Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is the author of Sherlock Holmes. And we actually have two different copies of books here. These were put out by Barnes and Noble and they just have a bunch of different short stories of Sherlock Holmes. I actually got this copy from my dad as well because I thought it was really pretty. And sorry, I gotta show this too because the reason why we buy books sometimes is because they're just beautiful. But look at this really beautiful like peacock pattern here on the inside. I just really like it. So for those that maybe are unfamiliar, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is a writer and also a physician. I didn't know that until I actually kind of was doing just a little bit of research. I just thought he was just an author, more than an author. He's created a character that is thrive for over, gosh, over 125 years, which is really cool. Um, but he has written 60 stories that include, I think, probably the most famous detective of all times, Sherlock Holmes. It's really exciting because it's a name that everyone knows, whether it's in any of these stories or any of the adaptations that come out on Netflix. Um, there's, I guess, the movie was on BBC first. But they have Sherlock on there, which a lot of people currently probably watch or have watched, even though it took a long time between seasons. But a really, really cool adaptation. And then the movies with Robert Downey Jr. There's just so many different variations of it that I feel like no matter who you are, you've definitely heard the name. And um, beyond just Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle has written nearly 200 other pieces of work that include short stories, novels, poems. Um, I think that there's also some historical books and pamphlets. Something that I found as I was researching Sherlock Holmes is that the two short stories that I'm going to talk about were actually published in um, magazines. So the first being in the UK Strand magazine and then published in the United States under Harper's Weekly. So it's kind of a neat way to get stories out there. The two stories that I'm going to be focusing on were one was written in 1892 and the other one was written in 1893. And it's just beautiful that these works from in 1800s are still relevant and still enthralling and enjoyable. Sherlock Holmes is fun. I wanted to talk about the first book, that, or short story rather, is The Speckled Band, and that one was one that was written in 1892. And the reason why that story sticks out to me is because that's actually the first Sherlock Holmes story that I had ever read. My dad had this really awesome hardcover um, collection of Sherlock Holmes stories. It was this bright red uh, duster jacket on it. And when I realized that there were short stories and I didn't have to read this huge mammoth of a book, I got excited because sometimes you don't want to commit to a huge book. And I was, I was pretty young at the time. I don't remember how old I was. But that was the first story of Sherlock Holmes that I read. And I remember just being in awe of how he figured it out because it's one of those locked room mysteries where they're trying to figure out how someone could possibly have been murdered in a room that it appeared no one went into or out of. So really a cool story. And then I wanted to read a little part from The Musgrave Ritual, and that's one that was written in 1893. But the reason why I wanted to read part of that one is because the first, like, two paragraphs, I think, just really beautifully show kind of the quirky relationship between Holmes and Watson and just what a character Sherlock Holmes is and I think why he's so endearing to all of us. And that just reminded me, I don't know if anyone has watched um, Enola Holmes, which is also really, really cute. That's a Netflix one, um, but really awesome. And just a fun adaptation of Sherlock Holmes. But 
we're going to get into this one. It's the Musgrave Ritual. And bear with me, I'm a little nervous reading out loud. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. And if not, just don't tell me. We'll just leave it as is. So the Musgrave Ritual. An anomaly which often struck me in the character of my friend Sherlock Holmes was that although in his methods of thought he was the neatest and most methodical of mankind, and although also he affected a certain quite primness of dress, he was nonetheless in his personal habits one of the most untidy men that has ever drove a fellow wise jerk to distraction. I mean, that's Sherlock Holmes in a nutshell, right? Genius mind and his house a mess. Which reminds me, I want to pause for a second. Um, funnily enough, 221B Baker Street doesn't actually exist, but in the UK, in London specifically, they did put a museum in on Baker Street and they did put a door in for 221B, which I love. And of course, the one time that I went to London, I made my friend and my cousin who was there with me. Um, we, of course, had to go by Baker Street because it's just so iconic. So now, Watson continues with, not that I am the least conventional in that respect myself, the rough and tumble work in Afghanistan, coming on the top of a natural bohemianism of disposition, has made me rather more lax than benefits in my opinion. But with me there is a limit, and there I find a man who keeps a cigar in a coal chute, his tobacco in the toe end of a Persian slipper, and his unanswered correspondence transfixed by jackknife into the very center of his wooden mantelpiece, that I begin to give myself virtuous airs. Definitely don't keep my correspondence with a knife in it. It's so silly. I have also held too that pistol practice should distinctly be an open air pastime and when Holmes in one of his queer humors would sit in an armchair with his hair trigger and a hundred boxer cartridges and proceed to adorn the opposite wall with a patriotic VR done in bullet pockets I felt strongly that neither the atmosphere nor the appearance of our room was improved by it. Our chamber was always full of chemicals and of criminal relics, which had a way of wandering into unlikely positions and of turning up in the butter dish or in an even less desirable place. But his papers were my greatest crux. He was a horror of destroying documents, especially those which were connected with his past cases. And yet it was only once in every year or two that he would muster energy to docket and arrange them. For as I have mentioned somewhere in these incoherent memoirs, the outburst of passionate energy when he performed the remarkable feats with which his name is associated and were, follow were followed by reactions of lethargy, during which he would lie about with his violin and his books, hardly moving, save from the sofa to the table. Thus, month after month, his papers accumulated until every corner of the room was stacked with bundles of manuscripts which were on no account to be burned and which could not be put away save by their owner. I just think it's such a great introduction. It really reminds us of who these characters are and feels a little bit familiar for myself in regards to having books thrown about. Right now I have my stack of two here that I tried to make look neat and tidy for this video. But I have another stack on the table over there. Upstairs by my nightstand, I have my huge to be read stack. Behind my bookshelf, there's a little space. I have more stacks there because I ran out of room. So I think um, a little bit similar to our favorite detective in this regard. I hope you liked that short little excerpt from Sherlock Holmes. And if you haven't read any of these stories, they're definitely worthwhile. If you don't want to read them, movies and shows and series and just lots of good anecdotes from like I said our favorite duo Sherlock Holmes and Watson so I hope you enjoyed this little clip for Mystery March here with our home libraries thank you so much and we'll speak with you soon bye